Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll have the outlook for the grain and livestock markets for first quarter 2022. A new report shows the U.S. is falling behind on trade. A QR code could be a boon for hunters looking for hunting land. And we'll show you entries and the winners of the Ag Week Beauty of Agriculture photo contest. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Rose Dunn. The EPA has released a report detailing nearly 3,500 alleged drift-related damage complaints from dicamba in 2021. But the agency says they can't move fast enough to make changes for the 2022 spray season and instead will allow states to tighten restrictions if needed. Industry officials say getting the guidance ahead of the growing season was welcomed. However, EPA left the door open for changes in 2023 and environmental groups may use the complaints in their lawsuit to ban the product. 2021 was a year of strong prices for grains due to robust international demand. Will that continue into 2022? Michelle Rook talked to an expert to find out. Joining me is DTN market analyst Todd Holtman. Todd, let's talk about soybeans first. South American weather and demand will probably be the keys in the first quarter, but the demand situation is different than it was a year ago, isn't it? Yeah, last year we were incredibly focused on China and everything they were buying up. Uh, this year, that's not the case. It's really domestic demand that has this market on fire, and in particular, it's soybean meal. There just seems to be phenomenal cash demand for physical meal in the U.S. So soybean exports are behind where we were last year at this time. So can Crush make up for that? You know, as I look at USDA estimates and try to crunch the numbers, I don't see how at this point. Uh, we're just about done with our export potential to China, and it looks like we're about 24% below a year ago. But I can tell you technically from looking at the market, the market does not seem to have a concern with that math problem, and uh, probably USDA's estimates are going to have to be adjusted somehow. So if South American weather stays hot and dry into January, will we stay above $13? Of course, that just adds a little excitement on the non-commercial side. Uh, and so uh, you're right, that'll be watched very closely. I think we will stay above $13. The crush value uh, has been incredibly strong. Usually, you know, the crush premium is maybe a buck and a half above the soybean price. We're trading closer to two and a half dollars above. I mean, it's just an extraordinary incentive to keep crushing those U.S. soybeans. So what is your marketing advice for soybean producers? On soybeans, I just see uh, no rush right now to price things, either old crop or new crop. So let's talk about corn, because here demand is strong both domestically with ethanol and with exports, right? Yeah, exports have actually been doing quite well. Of course, we don't have Brazil's competition this year. They got hurt by drought last year. And the demand from the ethanol side of the market has just been phenomenal here in the fourth quarter of 2021. Now, we've seen that ethanol price really come down significantly the last, well, since Thanksgiving. It's come down over a dollar a gallon. So that concerns me a bit. But even with that drop, we're still seeing profitable margins at the plant and very generous bids from the ethanol plants for corn. So do you think this market is either from a cash or a futures perspective going to be able to continue to hold above $6 on corn? I think that's probably going to be a bit of a difficult struggle. Uh, we could chop sideways a bit in the first half of 2022. And I think any price you can get over $6 for old crop corn uh, is a very attractive sale. So when do you suggest corn producers make some new crop sales, especially keeping in mind the higher fertilizer prices? If you got a reasonable fertilizer cost locked in, let's say your cost of production is looking well under $5 a bushel, and you're not in a drought risk area, 550 might be attractive to say forward sale, 25% uh, of next year's production. But uh, without those factors I mentioned, I, I see no reason to be in a rush right now. What about the wheat market? We've had very tight supplies globally of milling quality wheat. Will that continue to keep that market pretty well supported? I have to say I'm, I'm a little skeptical here. Fundamentally, the answer is yes. We should continue to have tight supplies at least through February without much threat from the market. My, the, I think the wild card here, again, is end user buying. And we know that at some point when that end user buying gets satisfied and it shuts off, that rallies over. So marketing advice going forward. We've recommended being 75% sold already in all three weeks. So we're just playing with the remaining 25% 
of 2021 production. And with that, I'm willing to be a little more patient for at least the next two months uh, to see if we don't get another buying surge and challenge the highs. But if we get to the end of February and it hasn't happened yet, I'm not going to be too patient uh, with that last 25%. Thanks for your outlook and analysis. Thank you, Michelle. That is DTN Market Analyst Todd Holtman. A study released by the Corn Refiners Association shows the U.S. is falling behind on trade and export competitiveness. The report says the U.S. needs to regain lost ground to international competitors. The group's CEO says over the last decade, China and Europe have made major gains versus the U.S. on multilateral trade pacts. The U.S. had only um, 30 percent of the value of what the EU entered into, and only 40% of the value of the new agreements China entered. Bodhi says USMCA is a great deal, but was a renegotiation that didn't make significant gains for U.S. agriculture. There's a new tool for farmers to measure and reduce carbon emissions. Fargo egg tech company Bushel is teaming with Bayer and Amazon Web Services for Project Carbon View. The goal is to cut carbon emissions within the whole supply chain. A facility can send the scale ticket information directly to Bayer so they can calculate the carbon impact score that grain might have created. The program compensates farmers who implement sustainability practices. Bushel CEO Jake Jornstead says it's simple to use and and can help both farmers and ethanol plants. These are real, direct, traceable ways to show that your corn was grown more efficient than the average, and therefore the, the facility you sell to, and that facility and you can make more money in the process. Currently, Bushel has 200 grain companies around the country on the platform, representing about 60,000 farmers. Coming up on Ag Week TV, landowners and hunters now have a new technology for posting hunting land. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. South Dakota Soil Health Coalition will be hosting the 2022 Soil Health Conference on January 18th and 19th at the Best Western Ramcota in Aberdeen. Offering a chance to network and learn from other producers and ag professionals on a broad range of soil health topics. Conference registration is free for students of any age and offers valuable information for all. You can learn more about the conference and register online at sdsoilhealthcoalition.org. I'm Peter Bosch, a farmer from Buffalo, North Dakota. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I decided to go with Brock Grain Bins on my farm because we've had several of them over the years. My favorite thing about them is how fast the unloaders can take the grain out of the bin and get me on the road to the elevator. The best part about working with Gateway was the ease of making changes or anything that I wanted to add or delete from building the shop. The design crew there was very easy to work with and met and exceeded all my expectations. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there, tell them your plans and your future dreams, and let them design something that you would be happy with. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. The 40th annual Egg Week Farm Show will return to the Graham Arena Complex at the Olmsted County Fairgrounds on March 8th through 9th, 2022. This year, Egg Week plans to host panel discussions on four hot topic issues in agriculture, egg in a carbon neutral world, cybersecurity in agriculture, animal egg policies, and urban agriculture. It's going to be a can't miss opportunity for farmers and egg leaders in the region. Farmers can get some financial help to set up wetland banks. 
The National Resources Conservation Service has awarded $875,000 to North Dakota Agricultural Mitigation to help farmers lower the cost of establishing wetland banks. The North Dakota organization is made up of six ag groups in the state. The money is part of $5 million in funding from USDA. The Wetland Mitigation Banking Program supports critical wetland restoration and protection while also expanding options for farmers and ranchers to restore, create, and enhance wetland ecosystems. Hunters and landowners can now use technology to post land or request permission to hunt. A Fargo company has developed a system of using phones to scan QR codes to try to solve a long-standing issue over land and hunting rights. Levi Otis says he and brother-in-law Kyle Ryerson were inspired by using a QR code on a restaurant menu to use that for posting land. The company puts a QR code on a posted sign unique to each parcel. The hunter can get a fast answer and the landowner doesn't have to respond to multiple phone calls. We just wanted to simplify or streamline the process of, of communication between the landowners and the hunters' the land that they wish to access. The company was started about a year ago. Otis estimates about 50,000 acres are posted this way in North Dakota and their signs are up in 10 states. A long research partnership between NDSU and potato giant R.D. Offit Farms has yielded good results for growers. They've worked together for 25 years, helping to solve potato diseases around the world. RDO Farms provides some research funding, but also hosts research on their farms. That is funded by others. Well, one of the benefits of having research projects in production fields is that they're able to utilize uh, real-world scenarios. Okay, The production practices are as a commercial grower would uh, do them. Uh, they're not trying to mimic that in a greenhouse or in a small plot scale. They're able to overlay their treatments into real world production practices. It's not quick. You know, solutions to these problems take years to develop. You know, we're starting on the lab level. We may go to the greenhouse with it. We go to the field with it. This is a long, a long process to really show that, yes, you're going to get an economical benefit from, you know, whatever this management practice is. Pashi estimates the RDO partnership accounts for about 20% of her team's research. A marketing enterprise that sells sugar for the region's sugar cooperatives is enjoying a sweet year thanks to the success of some key investments. United Sugars sells sugar for several co-ops around the country, including American Crystal and Mindac. It now controls 43% of the volume purchased by the top 10 sugar users. Its recent growth is fueled in large part by a major construction project. In 2017, American Crystal built a large dome for sugar storage near Chicago. It allowed them to double the amount of bulk sugar delivered in the Chicago area, which is the world's largest sugar market. We've got three times as many bag customers as we did before, and uh, our bulk truck customer count is up by 50%. American Crystal is now installing a second dome, which will be operational during the processing and selling campaign of the 2021 crop. Ahead on Ag Week TV, Michelle will lead another market discussion, this one focusing on livestock. Hamilton System Inc. in Drayton, North Dakota is the North American distributor of the Fantini Corn and Sunflower Header. Both the L03 Corn Head and the G03 Sunflower Head have a simple, high-efficiency, low-maintenance PTO-driven gearbox, which eliminates slippage and power loss even in the most trying conditions. These heads are built with a solid one-piece frame and tubular steel construction that will withstand the harshest field conditions. Available in models from 4 to 18 rows, they adapt to any combine and come with a four-year warranty on the transmission units. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours.
at Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. It finally felt like winter this week. Will that trend continue into the new year? Here's John with our Agro Weather Outlook. Happy New Year. Let's take a look back at the last year and look forward to what uh, how things may change in the coming year with regard especially to crop moisture and agricultural conditions. Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Southern Canada. You know what? It was not a good year, especially in the Northern Plains. That spring summer drought, it was kind of a flash drought, kind of started suddenly, really kicked in. We did ease things off by the end of the year. But the still underlying soil moisture conditions are not exactly rosy in many areas of the Northern Plains. We did see uh, the acute drought conditions of mid to late summer improve greatly by some rainy weather in the fall and the prospects of the winter with a little more snow than average and colder temperatures than average. We'll talk about what that means. Going back to the start of the year, the drought has been ongoing in the southwest for many years. That moved northward a bit. Still the southwest quite dry. We were kind of dry in the northern plains because the fall had been dry, but the summer last year as in year before summer before last had been actually fairly wet and uh, so the fact that it was a dry fall simply meant we had excellent harvest conditions and it was really that way throughout most of the northern plains upper midwest and a great lakes area down through the corn belt but as the year moved along we started to get a little bit dry but really temperature wise we just weren't seeing a lot of heat until we got into june and then once that happened extreme and severe drought became exceptional in many areas of north dakota Meanwhile, it continued raining down here through much of the central and southern Corn Belt. And in the west, the drought grew and expanded into much of the Pacific Northwest, especially in the forested area of the northern Rockies. As we got toward fall, drought conditions eased back a bit in the northern plains, started to uh, increase a little bit, drought that is, in the southern plains. And even the southeast has been fairly dry so far in this early winter period. But let's focus on the northern plains and go back to the start of the uh, season. Last January, things were just a little dry, but it was winter. No one cared. As we got into the summertime, and especially in June when the heat kicked in, we started to see that drought expand. It started to get much worse down here in the upper part of the Midwest as well. This was about the peak of it in the northern plains. We started to get a little bit of rain. Of course, you don't just recover from a severe drought right away, but we definitely did get a little bit of moisture recharge, particularly the Red River Valley down and through Iowa during the early part of the fall. Fall, but it's still pretty dry out there and with the forecast looking like this likely wet over the next several months keep in mind it is also likely to be a colder than average winter so while there will maybe be some above average moisture January through March that's not going to bring a lot of water and with frozen ground over most of this area it likely won't make much difference once we get into springtime we will just like last year be reliant upon timely rains and we'll have to see if they come this summer or if they don't like they didn't last year. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you can help protect the price of your production? Livestock Risk Protection or LRP is a great tool to help you protect the price of your years of hard work. LRP is available for feeder cattle, fat cattle, and swine. Besides the availability of price risk insurance in your production, cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from the lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage or PRF Insurance. To learn more about these programs, call Martinson Egg Risk Management. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. 
Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer. Check out all our new and used equipment online at northstaregg.com or call 701-361-4790. Systems way good work, good faith in a good life. Let's me live my way. Good work, good faith in a good life. Trans systems way good work, good faith in a good life. Let's me live my way. It's trans systems way good work. Good For Ag Week, this is Mickle Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Livestock prices fared much better in 2021 than the COVID-depressed markets of 2020. Michelle Rook got some insight about what's ahead for the new year. Joining us with our Livestock Market Outlook is Scott Varlick. And Scott, uh, let's talk about cattle first. Cash strong through the end of the year till about the last two weeks. And cash kind of led the futures. Do you anticipate cash will take off and do that when we start a new year? We need some more cash news to feed this fire, basically, because we've climbed up to, you know, some 140 levels, very nice prices, appealing to a producer, prices that we haven't seen in, in several years. So we need some more, uh, some more of that cash news to kind of keep it going. We've got to keep feeding the bull. Otherwise, it's going to kind of start to run out of gas, get a little bit weary as producers see cash remaining steady and see some of these higher premiums in the, in the futures months they're gonna to start to be interested in looking at selling some of those contracts. And, and you could see a little bit of hedge pressure there. Uh, the longer we stay sideways and don't get fed, the more risk it is, I think, for this market to take a little bit of a correction there. What about supply? When will the numbers tighten here due to the drought? When will we see that marketing hole? I think after we get through the next few months, get through this first quarter, I do think those tighter numbers are gonna to start to show up. We don't have as many cattle ready in the summer and into that fall time frame as we used to. So what are your price projections for cattle in the first quarter? First quarter, we've been fairly steady in the upper 130s. Uh, usually January to me is always a little bit sluggish. We see the, the futures prices and we want those higher prices, but it always seems to take just a little longer to get there than what it probably could. So I, I look for it to be, stay a little bit sluggish, sideways kind of trade here over the next January and into February. So Scott, let's talk about the hog market. First of all, on the supply side, the hogs and pigs report at the end of the month pretty much verified these tight supplies. Yes, hogs and pigs reports showed what we're hearing from the country. That numbers are a little bit tighter. We're running into disease controls and, and the price on these feeder pigs is starting to increase and swiftly. So hearing that a lot more from the country that it's tougher to find the supply. And what are you thinking about demand for pork, especially exports? We're, we're pretty reliant on, on how that goes with China. I do think our domestic demand is going to stay um, pretty rock solid. So what are your price projections for hogs in the first quarter? I think there's some upside potential. I just don't think it's uh, massive by any means. I think there's still that looming factor that African swine fever is still something that's out there. So trying to get some sort of floor is as cheap as I can and leaving my upside open. Thanks so much, Scott. That's Scott Varlick with Quima Quima Varlick. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll show you the winners of our Beauty of Ag contest. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. 
They were the general, they took care of the electrical, they took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. The 40th annual Egg Week Farm Show will return to the Graham Arena Complex at the Olmsted County Fairgrounds on March 8th through 9th, 2022. This year, Egg Week plans to host panel discussions on four hot topic issues in agriculture, egg in a carbon neutral world, cybersecurity in agriculture, animal egg policies, and urban agriculture. It's going to be a can't miss opportunity for farmers and egg leaders in the region. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. How about kicking off the new year with a seafood feast? Kristen Clark says it's the perfect way to wrap up the holiday party season. Clark writes the monthly food and swine column in Ag Week magazine, and she shares videos on agweek.com. This week, she shares some tips for creating the perfect seafood party. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and Ag Week magazine this week. How will inflation, coupled with effects of the Great Resignation, affect agriculture in 2022? And Buffalo Creek Mills in Manitoba is expanding its ability to process oats into a variety of products. During November and December, Ag Week asked readers and viewers to submit their favorite photos for our Beauty of Agriculture photo contest. Voting took place on agweek.com. Our third place winner was this gorgeous shot from Amanda Lehman who farms in southern Ohio. What a spectacular sky. Second place went to Lori Kappas from Borup, Minnesota for this beautiful silhouette sunset harvest shot. And the winner of the 2021 Ag Week Beauty of Agriculture contest is John Barch, who farms near Buxton, North Dakota. He called this Crop Scout. It's his dog, Dakota. Thanks to everyone who entered and thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. As we leave you, here are more entries for this year's Ag Week Beauty of Agriculture photo contest. Happy New Year, everyone.